Hi guys, Spencer here and welcome back to Flight Simulator X. So you might think like, what are you doing in the air and why are you not on, on the grounds doing your pre-flight? Uh, well, today we are doing something, again, a little bit different because uh, a few of you didn't really understand uh, the landing part of the full tutorial of the 737 uh, 800 or the 737 NGX. So I thought, you know what, let's make a different video with a bit more explanation about the landing. And we're also going to fly an ILS landing. We are today um, taking the flight from Heathrow to Dublin. Uh, we just had our top of climb, we are now flying and the top of the set is coming in. Uh, we're landing today at uh, Dublin, as I said, on uh, runway 28. Uh, with the uh, Lip G1X arrival. Um, so let's get in the cockpit, let's get an FMC up and let's program the uh, arrival in and let's do well everything to make sure you guys can land this plane flawlessly. So here we are in the plane. Uh, we are having a cruise altitude of a 310, flight level 310 if you zoom out. Uh, here is our top of descent, so we do need to get going. Get an FMC up. And let's get to the departure arrival page and let's go to uh, Dublin ARR, so that is arriving. Get in there. Um, first you want to select the runway you are going to land on. So in our case that is runway 28 uh, with the ILS. So we want ILS 28. And as I said, we are having the uh, Lip G1X arrival, so next page, till you find uh, Lip G1X, and let's get it in there. That is the route, that is our arrival that we are taking, so let's execute that. And if you have a look at your next page, after Lip Go, this is our arrival. So this is the star we just punched in, yeah? So if you have a look at your flight plan, if I can sort my uh, my stuff out, and we go to plan mode, this is where we are flying currently. And if you step through, there was the uh, the top of descent. This is our descending. This is a decel, so here we need to slow down. Left turn, and then we are landing at uh, runway two eight. Uh, that has. Um, um, height of 252 feet and that is quite important since we need to punch that in over here 252 is the nearest by of 250 so you need to get 250 in there um, that is for all to do with pressurization and stuff in uh, in the airplane so make sure that it's in there all right so that's the arrival punched in that is our star our standard arrival route punched in and if we go back, we see the last waypoint is um, is planned for 2,500. So what that means is that I want my plane to descend to 2,500 until I am taking over. So I punch in 2,500 here in the um, in the altitude section. 2,500. And at the top of descent, so that is the T slash D, that green, um, the green letters over here. At the top of descent, your plane is starting to follow your ILS descent path that you can see here. Flight level 310, flight level 238, flight level 171, and so on and so on. Until we hit 2500. Um, not because 2500 is in here, because Otherwise, when it's listening to this, it could go to uh, 252 feet. But because we have punched in 2,500 in there. So this is really like the section where you say to your airplane, this is how low you can go on your own. And after that, I want to take over and I want to land the plane um, myself. So that is uh, this section done. The plane is listening to that. And... As I said, at the top of the sand, it is starting to um, to slow down even, and it's starting to descend to 2,500, uh, following this ILS path. So you have the smoothest uh, descent you can get on this particular flight, because of course for every flight it is a little bit different. Sometimes you need to descend quite a bit, 
Uh, sometimes you need to descend like very very easy, like uh, 800 foot every minute. Uh, but as I said, sometimes very quick, uh, very quickly. So that's 2,000 or 2,500 foot every minute. So it is really different um, per route, per airplane, per airport even. Um, so yeah, just make sure that you punch in these um, this altitude before you are hitting the top of descent. When you haven't punched in your altitude in here and you miss your top of descent, the plane does not fly the descent by itself. So, when you miss this altitude before you are going for your top of descent, I suggest you just follow these altitudes. So, for instance, when we now just hit the top of descent, and I just about missed it, I'm just going to punch in 242 in there. So, fly level 242, so 2400 and, uh, wait a second, 24,200 feet. And when we are at that uh, waypoint, I'm going down to uh, fly level 173. So scroll, scroll, scroll to 173, 082, and so on, and so on, till we are at the 2500. Then I will take over and land this thing manually. Before the top of descent, actually, I want to take to put my passengers in their seats. And I want to attend my flight crew. This is not something regularly done by an aircraft. I mean, um, for one aircraft or for one um, company, aircraft company, so Ryanair, EasyJet, that kind of stuff, it's different. Some people do it at the top of descent, uh, some people do it uh, like 5 nautical miles before the top of descent. Uh, some people do it at 10,000 foot. It is really, really different. There's not really a standard for that. As you can see, we have quite a, a fast descent, 3,200 foot every minute. And if you noticed, I haven't touched a thing. It just had the top of descent. It noticed there is a different altitude in there, so down it goes. All right, so let's start uh, setting up our plane for our landing so if I head over to my second screen over here I can have a look at the ILS frequency for a uh, runway 28 uh, what I do uh, what I do I will go to uh, vetshoot.net and then to airport um, I will leave the link into the description if I'm not then please remind me with a comment and then I will post it um, and over there, there's, there's a section of runways, and in that section, all the runways are listed uh, with the course, length, elevation, latitude, longitude, ILS, ILS frequency, uh, ILS fact, and the GP. Um, so, in this case, I want to have a look at my ILS frequency. Uh, I have a look at the runway 28, ILS frequency is 111.35. So, I will head over to here, this section, with the big knob, 111, and with the smaller knob, I want 35 in there, so that is 35. Uh, press the TFR switch, and now 111.35 is active, and that is the ILS frequency for this runway, and as you have a look, this, uh, this screen did become a little different. Um, because if we are in range of the um, of the ILS, you can uh, lock on and then get into approach mode. But worry not, we are going to all do that. Uh, the course for this runway, uh, for uh, runway 28, is 279. So let's get 279er in here, 279er and 279er in here as well. That is the course. If you fly a DME uh, or a CAT, sorry, a CAT free departure or departure, if you fly a CAT free landing, uh, you need to set courses in both um, both stacks and then press two uh, other pilots. So the, then the plane is really landing by itself, and you just take out your other pilots when you are at I think 200 foot, and then land it yourself. Um, this is only being used when in really bad weather or when you have really poor uh, visibilities. 
and that is well that's really not the case today I mean the weather around here is really nice so I won't be bothering with doing such a thing so we're just going to a normal ILS landing but just in case uh, the weather can change I always put the course in there and you know make sure it's in there for your landing Alright, also, uh, we are having a length of uh, 2.6 kilometers, roughly, it's actually uh, 2,637 meters. Um, so I do want Outbreak on Outbreak 2. It's not the longest, it's not the shortest the runway. And, you know, for Outbreak 2, it is quite harsh and we are stopping quite on time, um, but it's good to decelerate quickly so you can uh, vacate the runway as soon as possible so air traffic control can get his next aircraft lined up and landing you know to keep the flow going so outer rate 2 is actually something I'm quite often using I almost never use outer rate 1 uh, only when I have like a really really long runway and outer break 2 is what I'm only using when I have a short runway and I actually never touch um, the max outer break I don't know it's it's always going alright but when you have like a short runway or you're not feeling confident um, press outer break 2 or even max in there so then you're decelerating really really quick and you're coming to a stop before the end of the runway hopefully Alright, so at, uh, at 10,000 foot we're going to put on the uh, landing lights and the runway turnoffs. We're going to put the ignitions into continuous. Uh, if you don't know why the igni ignitions are going into continuous, it's basically for when you're having a bird strike. It's, um, or, or something comes into your engines. Oh, we can't see them. I thought we might see the uh, the wing or even the uh, the engine, but anyway, uh, when something hits your engine, then it's more likely that it either stay running or it will spool up pretty quickly um, again. So you have less chance to a failure. If you are pressing the ignitions not into continuous and just to the off position, and you will get a bird strike. Or you're having a bird strike, I should say. Then, when your engine fails and it's turning off by itself, you have to do the whole startup procedure again. So that is really not something you want. Uh, so just make sure you press those things into continuous. So that is being done with pressing uh, per starter uh, to the right mouse button. Otherwise, you're going to grunt and it's trying to start up again, and you do not want that. So once press once with your right mouse button on the uh, the ignition switches and it's going into uh, continuous we're now at a uh, flight level 150 the descent is going uh, okay if you have a look we are having a restriction over here at a uh, flight level 070 so we can't go any lower than 070 and we actually can't be above 070 so you're playing really is calculating to be at this waypoint at 070 and at this waypoint as well um, at Lapmo over here we have a restriction with an A with Alpha 3000 A so what that means is you need to be above uh, at or above 3000 foot mostly it has to do with terrain mountains high buildings that kind of stuff make sure you obey these things if you are having an uh, a descent like this like autopilot descent with the um, with this just stuck in and you sort the plane you let the, the plane sort it out all by itself there is nothing going on it will obey these things and it will all be fine but if you miss your top of descent and you are pressing your attitudes in by yourself better safe than sorry so if there is like 3000 or above, I always uh, do the 3000 plus 500, so that will give us a 3500 
um, just to make sure you're not sinking down that uh, 3000 because it will get nasty. Also you have uh, sometimes a B and not an A, it's not shown over here. Uh, a B means below, so that means at or below that altitude. So there we go, just need to be below that altitude uh, that is given there. You may have noticed we are slowing down. The plane calculated its speeds, 240 knots needs to be flying over there. Uh, of, yeah. So we need to be uh, at 240 knots uh, before the waypoint of Lipgo. And we are not far away, that is what? Around 70 nautical miles. Um, so it is slowing down, make sure. Sometimes it's giving you track required down here. So down where this green bar is now. Uh, it's It sometimes says track required. Uh, what the plane wants you to do then is to get speed break out. So then it can descend and slow down at once. For now it's fine, no drug required. We are slowing down, we are descending. So stuff is really good going at this descent. Uh, our diesel is coming up as well. If we have a look, where's the lapmo? Uh, lapmo is... Oh, this is Lipco. Lipco and Lepmo. Ah, confusing. Uh, Lepco is somewhere over there. So we do need to get the speed down by ourselves. Flaps and stuff. Um, so a little before the diesel, I think at uh, DWE53, so at this waypoint, I will speed intervene. So that is that button. I will get it down to uh, 200 knots. Then when we hit 200 knots, I will get flaps 1 out and then press the VNAV back in. So what what we do then is we slow down for the flaps 1 speed, get flaps 1 out, then press VNAV. Yeah, and VNAV then calculates again the speeds you are able to fly. Um, 200 knots is by the way not the flaps 1 speed but the up speed. There we go, track required, so let's get some speed break out. Like that. Uh, 200 knots is the up position of your flaps. And then we press flaps 1 and press VNAV. VNAV then noticed, uh, or then is going to notice that we have flaps 1 selected. And it knows what speed needs to be... Um, what, what, what speed we need to go at flaps 1 speed so then it's going down with the speed we are descend uh, we are slowing down for the flaps 1 speed and then we are proceeding in the flaps sections till we are at uh, flaps 40 and to, uh, and to have a look what speed we need to apply go to the init ref um, flaps 40 we want a 40 uh, degree flaps with 132 knots press that get it into there and then we have this ref into here so that is like a reminder for the pilot so you have selected um, 40 uh, flaps 40 and you can fly at 132 knots at that um, at that selected flaps um, speed so that is there select that and in the 777 if you don't do this uh, your checklist will screw over you so you know just press it in there it's, it's not really a big thing to do just press it in there and things are going better all right loads of talking drag is not required anymore so let's get the drag in uh, we are going to speed intervene at least press the button we'll wait for a sec Till we hit the uh, waypoint, then get to 200 knots, and then thing is good. All right, let's get our heading or um, what we're flying now. That is what three one three three one heading three three one. Love flying through the clouds. All right, let's just wait now for the uh, for the waypoint. 
And at the waypoint, I mean, at the waypoint, we're going to, um, as I said, to, uh, to 200 knots. And then we will decelerate. So once you have flaps, uh, flaps 10 out, you need to lower your gear because your gear needs to be lowered before you're going to proceed to uh, flaps 15. If you're not aware, and you will get to flaps 15, and, but your landing gear is still up there, um, then nasty things are going to happen. We are, um, you are going to hear like a horn going off and make sure then press the gear down as fast as possible because it is a really irritating horn. Um, I noticed we have passed the 10,000 mark, but I wasn't really paying attention because I'm, um, I'm explaining quite a lot of stuff. Landing lights go off, uh, go on, wrong way turn offs go on, ignitions, as I said, into continuous, and that's everything you need to do there. Slowing down, no track required at the moment. Arm the speed brake. There we go. We are at um, at 200 knots, approximately 200 knots. Get flaps one out and press the speed intervene button. So VNF will. There we go. VNF will understand that we need to get flaps one. Drag is required. So let's get your speed brake out. It's underneath there. Drag required. Uh, just have your speed brake out until this message goes away and then you can put your speed brakes in again. We are at flaps 1 speed, flaps 2 is coming up, drag can come in and drag can go out again. Don't forget to enjoy your uh, your views while landing or while descending, because it is it is bloody beautiful around here. The air is a beautiful place, like serious. Okay, that's flaps two, flaps five. Drag is still required, so the uh, the speed. Um, Speed brake thingy is there. Let's press the four lock. So what it is going to do? Uh, it's now white. When it's green, it is locked to uh, to the localizer of the ILS. So we just press the the four lock. When it's uh, when it's locked, we can go to approach mode. And if you if you have noticed, this uh, diamond went on. I will explain more later on. First, flaps 10 coming up, speed brake is not required anymore, so speed brake is coming in. So at this moment, um, as I said, you're, um, you're, you're not locked because it's not green, so there we go. Okay, let's head to, over to the Hesco Pascals, the q and uh, 1013 for us today. This this Q and H is given by air traffic control. To punch that in, press the big knob to get into HPA, and then the small knob is making the difference like this for the Hesco Pascals. Uh, so one zero one three is our Q and H for today. Also, let's press this big button, and we will get our um, transition altitude or our uh, minimums for two hundred foot. Or 150 actually. So at this um, at this height, at this height, at this altitude, that was the word I'm looking for. Um, you will hear like minimums or um, or decision altitude. What it means is at that altitude you need to decide: are we going to land or are we going to go around? Uh, and have a miss approach. Yeah, so this is really your final decision. Are we proceeding with our landing or not? All right, let's lower the gear. Wait for the three greens. There we go. And we can have flaps 15 out. 
Jeff's 25. Now we are at the 3000 or above altitude, or the um, restriction. We soon will get a lock, I guess. Our last turn is coming in. Flaps 25 is flexed, so let's head over to flaps uh, 30. It is really beautiful. This approach, I, I just do love this approach. In the whole green of, uh, of Ireland and the water and that kind of stuff. Love it. Okay, full flaps, get your speed down, so speed intervene to uh, 132 in our instance, 132, ref, get your speed down to there, uh, by the uh, speed intervene, so then you are basically ready for your landing, your speed is good, your flaps are good, we have a lock on, so we are locked on the ILS now. We can get into approach mode. And what it does, uh, it arms these diamonds. These diamonds need to be uh, in the middle. So this is your height. We are currently a little too, uh, too low actually. There's our airport. We are a little too low for the perfect ILS landing. But we will catch up. And this is um, the left and the right. So we are a little, really a little to the right, but we are still in our band, so as you can see, it is going to the middle, and this one is going to the middle as well. Um, when both diamonds are in the middle, life is good, yeah? You want that. You want both diamonds in the middle of both, um, of both uh, lines, basically, I don't know what to call these. Uh, but when both diamonds are in the middle, then you have a good ILS uh, approach and your landing will be, well, most likely, it will be okay. We are almost at the uh, 2500. Single CH, so that means we are on a, a single autopilot. Um, so we're not doing the get free landing, and that's why it's orange. That means that the pilot needs to do something um, when you're getting close. I think when we have a double CH, it is actually green. But I'm not sure, don't hold me to that. There we go, both, um, both diamonds are, in the, are, are at the line. 2500, but if you notice, we are going through. We're not going to uh, stop at 2500 because we are in approach mode. Um, because we are in approach mode, it is now following our our descent path down to basically the wrong way. If we didn't go into approach mode, it would have stopped at 2500. All right, time to take out the other pilot. Shush, my airplane now. What I'm doing, I'm having also a visual, so I'm keeping my eyes on the uh, wrong way, and I'm also um, keeping my eyes on the diamond. So I do want them to be as much in the middle as I'm able to. And till this point, I haven't touched it. I am going to touch it now because uh, we are going a little too. Uh, too steep down. The diamond there is rising, so we need a less harsh um, descent. Now it's in the middle, and we need to descend a little bit more. One thousand five hundred. Take out your other throttle. So we are now. Fully controlling this aircraft, I need to be a bit to the right and a bit higher. But don't 
really don't um, only look at your instruments. Also, look at uh, the wrong way, have a visual. That is really important, as I um, as I explained in the uh, in the other in the full tutorial, basically. The light slope, okay. What that means, we are really too low now. So I'm just holding up here. Otherwise, uh, stuff will get nasty. Okay. Need to be a bit more to the left, and I need a bit more power to keep my plane flying. Otherwise we will get stall warnings and stuff and that is not fun stuff. And now we're above the ILS path. Descending again. We are landing. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. There. There we go. Soft touchdown. Reverse thrust. Miss that turn off anyway. Manual braking, reverse thrust is gone. We will vacate the runway over here. At uh, Echo 6, make sure if you're flying on um, on Fatsim, make sure you are telling um, ATC which vacate um, which vacation roads basically or way you took so this is echo six um all right so we have come to a stop over here we will clean up out brake are is uh, going off speed brake is coming in flaps are going up landing lights are going off oh off there we go runway turn offs are going off taxi goes on apu goes on ignitions are going off lights are going off but the um, uh, red collision light. And that is actually all that we need to do for the cleanup. We'll just taxi to a gate, shut this thing down, and then there you have it. And again, if you have any uh, any questions about what I've done um, with, with the landing, and if you want to see something else or if you need some more explanation about certain things uh, make sure to place a comment in the comment sections below um, quite a few of you actually uh, mentioned me on Twitter uh, like what the hell do we need to do in landing I mean the tutorial for itself was pretty okay but the landing was really weird because the, the plane thought our airport was way more to the left so I had to take over really early and it was a bit of a dodgy landing uh, but because the rest of the tutorial was quite okay I thought yeah mm, struggling and I thought you know what I explained everything I did so it might be okay but a lot of you just didn't really understand what I've done and wanted to have like a full ILS uh, landing tutorial and that's I mean enough people told me like to make such a thing and that's why you are watching this right now um, if no one actually commented or at mentioned me on Twitter or sent me a, um, a email or posted on Facebook I wouldn't definitely not have made it because then I think like everyone understands it life is good all right uh, we're just going to uh, put our aircraft over there so uh, we will turn left get to uh, a gate 
Um, so you know, this is this is really not only for me, but this is really um, why people are saying like, if you don't understand and if you want to see something, please comment. Because if no one is commenting, you don't know uh, what people want to see or uh, what people did not understand, and it, then it makes it very interesting to. Uh, t to make a video and you think like yeah but I don't understand that and well let's hope he will uh, he will explain sometime else but because I the maker don't know what you didn't understand um, I'm not going to to make anything like this explanation video because I think everyone understands yeah so that's why I'm saying just just make sure if you don't understand something uh, let me know we're going for gate 610 smash her down there we have a in uh, we have a in plane stairway so that's good staircase stairs whatever those things that come out of your plane or people can walk off to 610 slowly cruise in Slowly. Okay, that's that. Uh, that is uh, the parking brake sets. APU is running. Make sure to get over to APU power. Switch off your engines. Taxi light can go away. Rod collision light can go away. Oh. Three of the four fuel pumps can go away, but this one, because that one is fueling the um, the APU. Let's get the doors open and stuff. Air stair. There we go. Air stair. Cargo can open as well. F sections. Ground connections. Let's set all this. So we can take out our APU or get to ground, connect, uh, ground power. Take out APU, fuel pump can go away. Hydraulics, that was the wrong one. Hydraulics, there we go. Packs, graphic fans, all that kind of stuff. And there we have it. So again, uh, if you have any, whoa, look at this. That was like a perfect, a perfect wow that's that's perfect parking over there uh, but again as I said uh, if you have anything that you want to know or if you didn't understand anything or something or if you want me to explain something please 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 let me know in the comment sections below um, I am more than happy to explain everything to you guys uh, what I know about this plane uh, maybe I can go even more in depth uh, about the landing and that kind of stuff, but I hope you just understand what I did um, So yeah, please leave a like if you find this uh, video useful uh, Or if you enjoy this. Thank you very much for being here. Take care, and I hope to see you in the next one.